Hello everyone, it's Marcy, and today I'm here with a bit of a, an experiment. Uh, so what I want to do is I've got these two papers. This one I've just printed out on tea, some tea dyed paper, just some words and phrases that I want to print. And here I've got some number tags that were created by Shabby Dabby Doodah, and I've printed these out, but what I want to do is I want to take these, and I want to try printing them on fabric. So here I've got some muslin, and here I've got a little bit of feed sack fabric. So going to give this a whirl. Now I've seen I've seen this done in a lot of places. I know the Graphics Fairy has a video and the Book Vandal put one up. Lots of quilters have this video up. Uh, but I wanted to give it a try because I've not ever tried it before. So what we've got is I've got a piece of fabric. I'm going to send these through my printer. So I've got a piece of muslin that I've cut down to eight and a half by 11, which is the size my printer takes. Then I've got a piece of freezer paper, and this is just Reynolds Kitchen's plastic coated freezer paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fabric on the uh, glossy sticky side. One side is uncoated and the other side is coated. So I'm putting it down on the coated side. And what I'm going to do to help protect my ironing mat is I'm going to put this down here and you'll notice I didn't cut the freezer paper down to eight and a half by 11 because I don't want to I don't want to have to get it lined up that perfectly I'll cut that down after I get it ironed on and I'm also going to use parchment paper over the top of it to help keep from getting the the plastic coating onto my iron and here I've got my great big trusty craft iron. I've got it turned up to the highest setting. And I'm going to wants to slide around. Iron this down. This is something I've wanted to try for a while, and I just thought today would be the perfect day to do that. Okay, I have no idea how long it needs to go. My parchment paper. Okay, well that didn't seem bad. And then I'm going to flip it over and press down the other side. that up. I can see I've got some bubbles. I don't know if I'll be able to get those out or not. There they go. Okay, so I just want to try to not get my iron on that plastic coating as best I can. be my 
clothes iron until I started using it for crafts, and now it's my craft iron. Okay. So that one I will cut down in a moment. I want to go ahead and put iron my other one down so that I will be ready to go. I hope everybody's having a good day. I've already been busy this morning. I started a big crock pot full of beans and ham. For dinner, my husband is on call and this week, which means he works his normal uh, eight-hour day, but then he's on call for seven days, 24 hours a day as well. So having meals that are easy, quick and easy once he gets home is really helpful because I never know, you know, sometimes his work day may end at five, but then he immediately gets called out to something. So we never know during this seven day period when he'll be home. So I like to have something in the crock pot that he can just kind of grab and go if need be. All right. Let's turn it over this way and iron this side down. as we can. Yeah, that one didn't create nearly as many little bubbles as the muslin did. Okay. So there's that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this stuff moved off my desk, and then I will be right back. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around my fabric uh, so that this will fit in my printer. And like I said, my fabric is already cut to 8.5 by 11, so all I need to do is trim away this excess freezer paper. So after I got the beans started and started trying to figure out what I was going to work on today, uh, my phone started ringing. got a call from my husband and then a call from my son who lives in Arizona. So they got me all talked out early in the day. most of this and then I'll have to go back and clean up my trimming I'm sure okay so got that one I need to trim here a little bit I'm just trying to get it trimmed as closely as I can to try to give my printer no reason to refuse it. Now I will say, this is not I don't think you're going to find any printer that says, yeah, do this. So everybody that does this is pretty well doing it at risk to their own printer. 
I've never heard of anybody having a problem. Some people say they are able to make it work and some not. But I've never heard, I've not read anything about it destroying a printer. But I am making that disclaimer up front. Today here, we've got a beautiful sunny day. I believe it's supposed to rain a little later, but it, at least it's sunny for right now. So I'm enjoying that. All right, so I've got that done. Now, my printer setup is not really one that I can move around a whole lot. Uh, actually, I may try moving it over. Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to try to move my printer over here and see if I can make that work. Give me just a second, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my printer pulled over, and I've got my first fabric ready to go. I'm going to turn it over fabric side down and I am going to stack it on a couple of sheets of regular printer paper just to help make it a little easier to slide in. Okay, I had some problems getting my printer to print but it looks like now it's going to print. I Mine is only a front loading printer. A lot of them that I've seen have been printing from the back. So what I had to do is I had to take my fabric and place it in fabric side down. And here it comes. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to put my other one in. And I'm actually pulling my paper out and then stacking my fabric on top, fabric side down, and then putting it in that one. Okay, so my second sheet of number tabs is printing. And in the meantime, I'm just kind of letting the ink sit on this for a second, just to be sure it's dry. I don't want to smear anything. And it sounds like this one grabbed it just fine. This is so exciting. And I'm just doing really simple stuff here, but I can't wait to try actually printing uh, an image onto the fabric. I think that would be really neat, like for a journal cover or something. I think that would be really neat. So I'm going to let this one finish printing. And it's going to take a hair shade longer because it's printing in color. So I'm going to let this one finish printing, and then I will be right back. Okay, so my second piece finished printing, and I love the way that looks. I love that. So now I am ready to use these. Now, you will want to, once you're done printing, you will want to remove the paper backing. This backing is not permanent, and I think my finger, there we go. Just peel it away. Save that. 
and you're ready to go. And so like I've got I've got my words here. And I think the way I would use them is oh, this is nerve wracking. Start a cut. Didn't do that very straight, but that's okay, I can fix it. In fact, I didn't do that straight at all. But I like the frayed edges, so just cut that down. There we go, and I can just snip up these longer ends, and then I've got a nice, that was a journal page, a nice little word or phrase there. Now, obviously, I did not cut mine straight. As you can see, I ended up cutting off those two. Barely kept that one, but I did keep those. So be careful. <laughs> I probably should have gone across first, but I really like the way that looks, and then you've just got a little piece there that I can add to my ephemera, and work like a charm. Now, these I probably, given that they're closer together, and obviously I don't cut and tear very straight, probably these I will go ahead and just cut apart. And in fact, what I might do is actually pull out my well-loved cutting mat and my rotary cutter. Straight edge. I've not even taken the paper backing off yet. Get those some lined up. These, it would probably be easier just to cut with scissors. that up and then if you're as bad at cutting as I am take a little distress ink distress around the edges and then you can pull it off its backing when it's ready to use. And there you go. You've got a wonderful number tag to use. Oh, yeah. I'm going to enjoy this. 
I'll be doing more of this. Like I said, I can't wait to try printing uh, an actual full image on something like this to use either in my journal or on my journal cover. I think that would be fantastic. I love that. Take this one and distress it up a little bit. There you go. All right, so there you go. Printing on fabric using freezer paper. So experiment one was a success. I can't wait to use these and let me know what you think. Uh, and I've got a couple more experiments I'll be doing, just things I've seen that I've wanted to try, and those will be coming up shortly. So have a great day, and happy crafting, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.